Welcome back, everybody, to the Blazer Victory Podcast. John Duncan here, and I'm joined, as always, with my co-host, Darian Smith. And, guys, it is finally time for UAB basketball as the Blazers tip off the 2022-2023 season tonight, Monday, November the 7th, against the Alabama State Hornets. I definitely hope to see a lot of you guys in Bartow Arena come 6.30 tonight. Um, But, hey, (laughs) Darian, you know, this is, you know, on paper – the most this is going to be a very very talented team this year for UAB and I mean it's kind of like well hey with football you know hey expectations are high wouldn't you say right expectations are sky high this is probably the most well we're going to see because we're going to have a lot of talented roster in UAB history so this this roster as a as a team still has a lot to prove um, as far as like where where to fall on the talent scale because you got we got to see it on paper, it's up there. On paper, it's up there. And then we don't have a, a coaching issue. We've got we got AK going going into this third season. Yes. So uh, I'm I'm confident in him and what he's. As soon as he came here, he brought something special to UAB. So now that he's really got his mark and imprint on this team with the talent that he has amassed. Oh, man, I, I've I've been seeing Final Four predictions. It ain't me. Oh. It ain't me. Now, hey, I'm just a messenger. I saw something about you know. I hey, I'm just saying. I don't want to. I don't want to add all of that hype. I'm just saying that it's out there. That's all I'm saying. Hey, well, Blazer fan. Hey, I, if we can somehow get to our first Final Four, that would be. I mean, whew, man, I feel like this place would just go crazy. Um. I would love that. And, hey, you just mentioned Andy Kennedy. I mean, AK is the man. He's the king of the transfer portal. Um, but, you know, last year took UAB to the big dance, to the NCAA tournament uh, for the first time since the 2014-2015 season. And, I mean, I hate the draw. You know, we drew the Houston Cougars, which was a five seed, and UAB came in as a 12 seed. And I still don't know how Houston was a five seed. But No way. Like, uh, I remember I remember scouting that team. Like, this is the team that we got? <laughs> Out of all people, you know, you could just look at film. <laughs> and so, you know, how good they were. But just us being able to have that 12 seed and be in the position to, you know, make a run that year. That was pretty special. So, and we got Jelly Walker returning. Yes. And um, we got we got we AK hit that the the tel- the portal again like he always does. I think he's just so relatable. He is. I think he's so relatable, and the players trust him. They they trust that that he really wants the best for him. He really does because, you know, as they when they're here. You can see their relationship. It grows. It starts from somewhere to where, it, like, he's recruiting them. He 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 builds that bridge with them. But while they're here, it turns into something special. It's been it's been really cool to see. It, it is for sure. And honestly, I can't remember if it was Jelly Walker, uh, Jordan Walker, or somebody else. But I believe they recorded on saying that you know Andy Kennedy is just real. Like he, and that's why a lot of people like to you know play for him because he's just one hundred percent real with you. You know, he's not gonna you know lie to you or you know just kind of do you wrong he's going to be 100 percent real with you and that's you know what he has done with you know this resurgence of this uab basketball program um you know last year or the last couple years you know bringing in a mike earl transferring in uh be bringing in a quan a quan jackson transferring in from georgia southern i mean just bringing in talented player after talented player and i mean that's two guys that we lost from last season. You know, both both uh, Mike Ertle, a uh, mid-range Mike, as they like to call him. You know, we're going to miss him. And Quan yeah. Jackson, man, what a stud. Just, oh, he just, I just feel like he always knew where the ball was and just is such a great defender and, you know, was shooting the ball really well. And uh, both of those guys are still playing, you know, at the next level right now. So uh, yeah. definitely happy for them. But, hey, how about some of these guys that he's bringing in this year, uh, Darian? Um and I, we got to start with that guy that come that's coming over from LSU, Eric yeah, man. Gaines, man. Oof. Eric Gaines, yeah. Like I'm pretty sure you probably watch Sports Center and Woo, seen what a dog, all the man. About. <laughs> and that block, yeah, and the block too. Yeah, the very yes, turn it going right down the court and blocking like golly. 
man. Like th- th- that's what I said on Twitter. So, you know, I was able to go to the exhibition game um, of UAB, of course, handled business against Mississippi College. But Eric Gaines in person is 100 percent what we thought seeing on film from LSU and in high school. Like this guy is just as quick in person, elusive, very, very great with the ball. Just my goodness. And just like you just said, Darian, with that dunk that made it to top 10 on sports center, like he is going to be a stud for this UAB program. And, and you, we hadn't even got to the other guys that AK brought in this year, but Eric Gaines, he is going to come in and immediately make an impact on this team. And that is what, you know, we needed, especially losing a guy like Mike Rodel and Quan Jackson. You know, you bring Eric Gaines in, who's a great defender and very quick, very fast, very good with the ball, very good ball skills. You bring him in and put him on the court with Jelly Walker. Woo. Man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be something to watch. That's the thing, especially um, at the CUSA level. When you bring in a, a, a probably – this guy has to be one of the top 10 athletes in college basketball. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Period. In the whole NCAA, like, you 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 putting this guy in CUSA, I can I can just about guarantee you CUSA doesn't have anybody that has his athleticism. No one. No one, because it's like you can watch one or two highlights and be like, oh, it's going to just jump off the page. You don't. You, if you watch one or two highlights of him, you don't have to see his game. You don't have to see nothing about it. You're gonna see that this guy's a, a special athlete. Period. You're gonna start there, and so just watching this game and see that, like you said, he's ultra quick. I love that the fact that he has like, especially having to replace somebody like Quan Jackson, um, you know, who was such a good defender, such a like for that guard forward position. He was such a good rebounder. Mm-hmm. And he would get in there and do all the dirty work. <sighs> Eric Eric Gaines is probably he's not as tall, but man, this dude is probably the most explosive athlete we've had here at UAB easily because <laughs> he's one of the <laughs> most explosive guys in the country. He is, and he so is. um, just to have him in that backcourt defending, he can knock down the long ball, he can make plays off the dribble. And he, the, I think the thing I like about him is like the spirit that the dog that he plays with, like the dude is in your mm-hmm. face. He's, he's that guy, you know. He's not, he's not gonna bag down from anybody. Um, every every highlight, every time I've seen him play, he's been all in your grill, a hundred percent effort motor, and that's what I like because that that's the stuff that rubs off. That's the stuff that Quan used to do, mm-hmm. and it would rub off. It's you you know so. Um, just the intangibles he's bringing, along with that pop of athleticism, is going to be special. No doubt. And let, let me ask you this, Darren. In your opinion, is Eric Gaines one of the most hyped players in UAB basketball history? Most definitely. Mm, yes, I agree. Most definitely. I I can't I can't remember in my my span of being a UAB basketball fan. I can't remember an athlete more hyped than people are just waiting to see. And I think I think the reason for the hype, not only because of his individual game, but because we're pairing him with Jelly mm-hmm. and his team. So it's like, oh, man, the ingredients are mixing up to be something special, you know. And I trust AK as a coach to be the one to bring it all together. 100% agree. Well, let's talk a little bit about a couple other guys that uh, Andy Kennedy was able to bring in for this 22-23 season. Um, bring over uh, Ladarius Brewer and, and and Ty Brewer, both coming over from East Tennessee State. And this was a team, you know, that UAB saw last year in the season and beat them. And I think both of these guys are going to be special, too. I mean, you look at uh, Ladarius Brewer. I mean, this is going to be another guy that – can shoot the three-point ball uh, pretty well. Um, got 14 points in the scrimmage against Mississippi College. And, you know, you got his brother Ty um, coming in. He got 11 points in the scrimmage, uh, or the exhibition game, I'm sorry, against Mississippi College. So I think both of those guys will be able to come in and just give some immediate uh, impact on this team as well. Um, you know, maybe not as much as <laughs> Eric Gaines, because I mean, but Eric Gaines is just one of those, you know, as you said earlier, you know, one of those just top 10 guys um, in, in the country right now, but I really do like AK 
bringing in bringing in the Brewer brothers, you know, from East Tennessee to this year's squad. Yeah, because they they bring one thing that I love about these guys. Um, it's, it, when you when you look at Ladarius Brewer first, it's a lot of um, experience. Yes, because you know it's red shirt senior. You know he's a he's a red shirt senior. He's played a, a lot of games at with um, Eastern Eastern Tennessee State, right? East Tennessee State, yes. East Tennessee yes. State. You're talking about you know he was they were all conference mm-hmm. over there. You're talking about averaging double digit points. And he brings size. That's a six five and six seven. Mm-hmm. That's size. That's wing players. You know they're looking for those in the NBA. I can tell you right now. I I watch the Lakers because I'm a LeBron fan. They need some size on the wing right now. You know, yeah. so you can't you can't size on the wing is something that you can't replicate. You can't duplicate duplicate. And the, these guys not only bring that, but they bring an all around game to it. You're talking about they started all of those games over there. Definitely. You know, and um, so Ladarius is more of the uh, the more score. They both come from Mississippi. You know, I'm from Mississippi, so that's a plus. Yes. Ladarius, <laughs> Ladarius is more of the the score, the guy that he's going to be shoot more. He's going to get to the rack, and, uh, you know, at 6'5", and Ty at 6'7", is going to bring more of that all around and Defensive play is going to hit the glass and going to be more of a finisher. And uh, I'm excited. These are really, really good pickups because of fit. Yes. If you if you know anything about basketball, you got to know how important fit is. You got to know how important roster construction is for basketball. So, man, to, to pick up guys that are super experienced, to go along with the experience that we already have on the team with size and with special traits to fit on the team that's that's great pickups by ak see and and i want to emphasize that a little bit too you know ak wasn't and he wasn't just going out and just let me let me get the most talented guys no he knew what this team needed this year and he went out and found you know not only are these guys talented but they are exactly what this team needed for this season so Definitely like that, and that, and that's a sign of a good coach. And I mean, we already know AK is a good coach, but right, I mean, he he's he's special. Um, well, speaking of special, um, this next guy that we need to talk about, Javian Davis, coming over from Mississippi State in the SEC. I mean, this guy, six nine two sixty five, Richard mm. Junior. Man, this Ooh. okay. So, what what uh, UAB fans are gonna appreciate and see out of Javian Davis is, I mean, this is a guy that is not only a good defender, but he is able to draw contact on the opposing team on defense. And now he's he hey he, is he a perfect free throw shooter? No, I mean, but he's he's got to work on that a little bit. But this guy is going to help Trey Jemison even more because let's face it, last year or last season. And unfortunately, when Trey Jemison got in very early foul trouble or foul trouble in a game, you know, let, let's face it, you had he was kind of toast. I mean, you know, we had Ronji Gordon, who's still developing and still could be good. Um, but I mean, you had be kind of struggling when Trey Jemison was off the off the court. Now you bring in a guy, JV and Davis, a big body again, six nine two sixty five, low coming from playing in the SEC. Hey. This helps UAB tremendously down low. And especially going to help Trey Jemison. Yes, like, so not only are you, it's not that we just found another big body no. to replace him with. We found another guy that's experienced, redshirt junior, played at Alabama redshirt freshman year, mm-hmm. played at Mississippi State these past two years. He put up numbers on these guys. He was putting, he's been putting up, he's been playing and logging meaningful minutes since 2019. See, this isn't a guy that's just been sitting on the bench on the SEC. This is a guy that's been playing. That's been SEC. playing meaningful right. minutes since 2019 in the SEC. And he's had games. You can go look at his bio. He's had games that where he's, when he's been fully utilized, he's, been, he's done his thing. And mm-hmm. so that's the most important thing. So now we're, not only are, we have somebody to fill in for Trey Jim. We have somebody good. That's a difference. That's, yes. that's quality built. And this dude is a low. Yes, Trey, Trey Jemison is 6'11", 260. 
Javion Davis is six nine, so he's two he's two inches shorter, but he's two sixty five. Mm-hmm. This dude is a load. He's gonna move people out the way, and that is one thing that we lacked when Jimison went to the bench was that physicality. One hundred. So we're bringing agree. in somebody else that's probably more physical. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know. So um, again, another savvy key pickup by AK hitting that portal, getting experience and fit and need. That's just to me. That's just a genius move. No doubt. And hey, and speaking of need, uh, something else that this team needed and kind of lacked at times last year, really the last couple of years, was uh, three point shooting. So what does Andy Kennedy do? All right, let's go to Binghamton. Did I, I said that right? Right. Binghamton. Right. Right. Okay, I talked <laughs> to you before we recorded. Okay, just making sure. Tyler Bertram comes over from Binghamton, and I mean, the redshirt junior, six three one seventy. I mean, this guy's a three point shooter. I mean, this was a guy too. Yeah, I mean, you you brought this up earlier, and I didn't even realize he played at Charlotte before going there. So. I mean, this is a guy that will give UAB a more consistent three-point option. And, and that's just in case, hey, if Jelly's struggling, which, I mean, you know, you play, what, 30 games or 35, 40, whatever, you're going to struggle some games. So this guy right here can help spread the ball around and give a, give another option of somebody on this team that can shoot the three-point ball. Now, of course, Eric Gaines and Ladarius Brewer, like we just mentioned earlier, can shoot it too. But – Tyler Bertram is going to be the three-point shooter for this team, uh, other than Jelly Walker, of course. Right. So I believe he's more of a specialist. Like, yes, er- Erdo was a guy that was um, – Erdo was a three-point shooter, but he was a scorer. Like, you can put the ball in Erdo's hands, and he can go to work. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't think this is going to be – I think Tyler Tyler Beecham, I think he's going to be a guy that's going to find space around the – around the edge so you can find guys in college basketball and in the league that play this type of ball all the time you're 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 you get you, and you can get paid a lot of money doing this you don't mm-hmm. you don't really necessarily have to handle the ball you need to run off screens you need that you your job is to provide gravity mm-hmm. you know and you got to have other teams have the game plan for you because your ability to find space around that three-point line and have them scared out of their mind because you you got the ultra green light. If you get a sliver of of airspace, you let it fly. Yes. And it's a high 30%, it's a like a 37% chance every time it's coming out your hands that you're going to knock it down. You know, that's almost one out of three chances, man. That's scary. Like <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's scary. So, if you have the the reason guys like this are so important if you have a Jelly Walker and you have an Eric Gaines and you already have a Ladarius Brewer, you have these type of guys, Tony Tony, you know, you got uh, Tavin Lovin. You got these guys that can handle the ball and be physical and get to the rack. If you got a guy out there that's running, so you got to worry about them. If you got a guy that's out there running around screens, flare screens, pin downs, mm-hmm. that's running around just trying to find space so he can get up a three, you can't mm-hmm. divert attention to those guys that's getting to the, getting downhill, that's scoring that, those pure scores. You can't divert or divert attention to them. So I don't know anything about his defense. Hopefully Tyler Beecham has some good defense. Cause on your job on offense, man, you ain't gotta you ain't gotta <laughs> touch the rock. Like you when you touch the rock, you let it fly. Exactly. You know, those guys are special. And I was gonna say, bro, like even if you know, of course he's gonna be doing screens and stuff, but hey. If you just sit in the corner and just stay there and stretch that team, because they're going to have to put a defender out there close to you. They're not going right. to be able to sit inside and give Jelly Walker, Eric Gaines the chance to drive in and, hey, and, or get it to the big guy, you know, whether that's Trey Jemison or Davis. Like, hey, this, I totally see what AK is trying to do. And I, I, I can't wait to see it. I think it's going to be very successful. Um, now, so what's something that we did talk about right before we recorded, um, Darren, was the, the kind of the starting lineup that UAB or that Andy Kennedy went with uh, in the exhibition game against Mississippi College. Now, we don't know for sure if, you know, this is going to be the starting lineup tonight in Bartow or going forward. I'm sure he'll mix it up. Um, but this is what we had against Mississippi College. We had both Brewer, uh, Ladarius Brewer and Ty Brewer, Jelly Walker, of course, Trey Jemison and Taven Lovin starting. Mm. Um I I really 
thought they did a great job last year with having Lovin coming off the bench and kind of ha- kind of having that spark. Um, you know, even if it's just a couple minutes in the game, just him coming off the bench, getting that fresh feel. I really liked what they were doing last year. So I don't know. Um, I mean, of course, you know, AK knows he's the coach. We're not coaches. Um, I, but I mean, maybe Lovin will start this year, which I'm, you know, fine with. Um, but I was a little surprised about that. Um, was anything surprising to you about that starting lineup for the ex- for the exhibition game, Darian? Yeah, with um, with 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 Buffin and yeah. with um, with with Buffin and Javion Davis being on the team. So I get it. I guess Javion Davis is going to be the primary backup five. That's going to have to log a lot of minutes, especially you're going to want Jemison or or Davis on the court at all times. So it's like, okay, I can get with it. I thought that Buffin, you know, maybe could, because of his size at 6'9", um, I thought maybe that he was going to get denied at the four because uh, I thought that the other Ty Brewer, I thought he was more of a three at 6'7", on the wing. But, you know, I know it's, it's and nowadays it's kind of positionless basketball. Yeah. You know, and 6'7", is not small. Mm. He's not a lot. He's not a small guy. And then I get it. You know, especially because Eric Gaines is 6'2". I get it because we still have good size on the wings. At You know, Ladarius Brewer at 6'5". And um, Tavin Lovin is 6'4". But he's a physical. He's very – he's extremely physical and athletic. Oh, yeah. He go, hey, he's going to take the ball to the rack. Like, he he's going to take yes, it. Yes, he is. <laughs> Guys bounce off of him. He's very strong. He's a physical defender. So I get it. We have, you know, we have the big man and we have our point guard that's not big and Jelly Walker, but everybody's in between. It's like that six five, six four, six seven, strong guys that can defend and play and fill in roles um, really well. So I I I, I can kind of see the the vision with the starting lineup. I'm gonna be curious to see as the game start. Do we need a little bit more size out there, especially at the four? But uh, we'll see. Yeah, that's honestly what I'm looking forward to the most uh, against Alabama State. Just seeing what that number one, that starting lineup is going to look like and um, just how they look. Uh, But let's let let me let me pose this question. Uh, Darren, what in your opinion, what what is the ceiling for this team for this 22, 23 squad? Like, is it is it? I know we joked around about the final four, but is it like just getting to getting to the NCAA tournament? Is it? getting one win in the tournament. What what do you think the ceiling is for this team? Uh it's kinda hard to say because um I need to you probably asked me that in, in three games or something. <laughs> yeah, right. Because yeah, I, I remember true. when I logged in that I really got to see last year when I really got to see us play. Mm-hmm. And I remember sitting down and watching I can't remember who who that was, but I remember watching that game on my phone. And I'm first word I said was damn. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I said that? Because we were so fast. Yeah. And I do not remember seeing a team like that at UAB. Like we were so fast. We were all over the court. It was the way that we was playing defense. And I was just like, man. And then we we would get out on breaks. We was causing turnovers and we were shooting and jelly pulling up and we were hitting shots. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm just like, damn. Like it just <laughs> it it jumped out at me like it, it just took you off like oh snap i didn't know it was like this yeah you know so i'm i'm wanting to see i want to see for the ceiling i want i want to see i i want to <laughs> i want to say another word like oh <laughs> <laughs> right yeah i want it to be stronger to really to, to see the ceiling on this team man because on paper and with the hype and the experience on this team, especially with AK as the coach, and you see all the fits, mm-hmm. like you can see the vision. You see this team winning a couple games in the NCAA tournament, to be honest, especially if we get the right draw. See, yeah, I agree. You know, it, we ain't getting freaking Houston. Oh, I hope know, not. <laughs> right off the bat, but we getting a team that's beatable, you know, like that we, we can go against and – and we can make a push, especially what if we, what if we end up ten seeding it, you know, something. 
Yeah, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of mixes and matches that go into it. It's kind of it ain't quite like football to where it's clear. Mm-mm. But uh, all I know is this is one of the most talented teams here, and we have one of the best coaches in this league. And um, I I'm excited. I think I think that I put it this way. It it is a disappointment if we don't go dancing. Oh That's yeah, it. no, I agree. I agree. And I mean, let me preface this. I, I agree with you too, though, that hey, I gotta see a couple weeks. Just see let me see a few games, just just to make sure. Um, because you know what we said about football now. <laughs> 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 but uh, but hey, it's a basketball possible. But but uh, hey, but hey. in football we still think that, right? Yeah, no, hey, well, yeah, you're right. Hey. We still think this is one of the most talented rosters, except we didn't know we were yeah. going to be going through the coaching fiasco. But, right. no, we have AK here in his third year more comfortable with the roster that he put together and the vision that he sees. And um, I, I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm excited. Me too. And honestly, man, like I – I can see this team advancing to the second week of the NCAA tournament. So this is a team that very well could get to the Sweet 16. A lot of it depends on, number one, like you said, what seed are you and who are you drawing in that mm-hmm. bracket. And so, And that is extremely important when it comes to basketball in March. Um, but let's, let's look at this schedule. Um, this, this schedule – it's not an easy one. There's some, there's, some, there's some good games. There's some good non-conference games on the schedule. Um, but let's let's talk about some of these non-conference game. Um, obviously tonight, Alabama State. That's not going to be one of your uh, big non-conference games. But I, you look at Friday on Veterans Day, UAB uh, playing in the Barstool uh, Sports Invitational against nice. a really good Toledo team. Now Toledo is a very good mid-major that I believe they won the regular season in the MAC last year, or if not, came close. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure they did. And they were a number one seed in their tournament. They just got, you know, uh, jumped in the tournament. Uh, so they didn't make the – in their conference tournament. So they didn't make the NCAA tournament. But I think this is going to be a really good test for UAB come Friday. That Toledo game in, an, in a, uh, a neutral site in Philadelphia. Mm. So that's one that I've got circled. Now, obviously, you look at West Virginia uh, on December the 10th. That's going to be a big one, and you know UAB very well should have beaten West Virginia at the BJCC last year. Yeah, um, yeah. Man. I was at that game, very disappointing. Just late in the game, just shots weren't falling, so unfortunately UAB didn't get it done. But that's going to be a big test. Um, but Darren, what what are some games that you're looking forward to the most? At, at least non-conference. But if you want to go to CUSA, you can go to CUSA. Just what looking at the schedule right now, what pops off to you as as a, as being an important game for this team? Oh, I think non-conference. I think you're right with the um, with the Toledo game. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, that they're one of the mid majors that can that can make some noise out there, and one of the, one of the more earlier tests that we're gonna face, especially on the road. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't, I don't, something about that game is telling me that Jelly Walker is gonna have a big game. I know. His affiliation with Barstool is one of the main reasons that we're probably in it. Hey, and real quick on that, did you see the new hoodies and shirts that he's got out? No, I, I think he got some more out. Man, yeah, they look sweet. It's got like the dragon with the jelly dripping on it. Like, it's, it's tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't even take no any notice of it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, it. Um, I think that game is going to be important. Like you said, it's going to. Just one of the the earlier tests, and I think those games are always like litmus tests to kind of yes. see where you at and where do you need to grow, you know. But how much natural talent it, it answers a lot of questions for you. It gives you that base. So I'm gonna be looking hard at that. Of course, Western Kentucky. If we're talking about conference, yes, I think that's gonna be them in North Texas are gonna be the challengers. And CUSA. Yeah, in middle too. Hey, I, I think you've got four teams. I think you've got uh, UAB, North Texas, Western Kentucky, and Middle Tennessee. I think those are going to be the top four teams to watch in CUSA. Um, and oh wow, I just realized, Darren, we we play Western Kentucky twice. Yeah, so we yeah we get them twice on the CUSA schedule this year. Well, last mm, year we only got okay. them once. 
So, yeah, we've got a, we got them at home January 11th, but then we've got to go to Bowling Green February 25th. So, mm. Mm, so that's going to be tough having to play one of the top teams in the league uh, twice. Twice and having to beat, beat them twice. Um, then you got yeah, middle twice, we, too. I'm just, yeah. Golly. We got South Carolina here. Um, yes. That's going to be the biggest home game, I think, at least non-conference. You know, having an SEC team, even though they moved on from Frank Martin from South Carolina, like, it's still going to be big to get just an SEC team to come into Bartow Arena. And, <laughs> hey, you know, like last year, West Virginia played uh, UAB at, the, at Legacy Arena at the BGCC. I still don't know why they did that. I would have preferred it to come to Bartow. Um, yeah. But let's, let's, let's pack out Bartow for that game, man, and have a, have a really good atmosphere again. I really, I really want us to like Bartow used to have a certain spark about it, you know, mm-hmm. especially when I was a student. Like people used to be waiting to go to those games, man. It was just a certain energy in the air, and it kind of it dwindled, you know. Yeah, like, I think especially after Coach Coach has, you know, so a couple of years after that, kind of just dwindled. But last year, I kind of saw it returning. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially was, towards the end, yeah. That North Texas game, went on. yeah. That North Texas game was popping, man. Now, it wasn't no eight thousand in there. I think there was like four thousand. But for the first time in a long time, I, I, I got just a taste of what you know the old days of Bartow. It still it was nowhere near what it used to be, but I, I got just a taste of it last year. I think it's um, and a lot of that has to do with the students. Um, yes, the students who haven't have been packing out, man. You, Get free tickets, man. We used to live to go to those games when we stayed on campus. Mm-hmm. Man, basketball game, bro. We we had to be there. So I really want the students to really show up, you know, because it, it's going to be off and on. Honestly, like you know, with with us, I mean, you talking about going to games Monday, Thursday, sometimes during the week. Man, that's hard. I got three kids, full time exactly. job. It's tough. Exactly, it's just, it is. It's really tough. You can you can kind of. You know, for for football, yeah, Saturday you get planned for it. You make it a family event. Like the only reason I wasn't at this last game because I had a sick wife and mm-hmm. raining and stuff like that. But any other time, let's go. I'm bringing extra family members. We're there, right? But basketball, man, you know, it's hard for the adults to just be there cons- consistently, especially mm-hmm. if you're a young adult like us. Man, if you're a student, man, get your butt up there and go to the game. <laughs> <laughs> go to exactly. the game. You ain't doing nothing else. You staying on campus, bro. You can study later. St- hey, settle for a C on that test. <laughs> no, hey, <laughs> go no, no, support. no, no. <laughs> no, settle for the C. C gets degrees. You settle for Good the point. C. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the game because guess what? This is something special we're right. witnessing with Coach Kennedy, Andy Kennedy, and this team. Right. Did you see Eric Gaines, man? I'm telling you, man. Come on now, get out here and support this team and, and support this coach. And we, fin- I want to, I want to see, Black- I want to see Barso get that magic Me when too. we play Memphis. I, I need to see that again, man. It was, it was packed out, and it was the place to be. And I believe that we have the coach and the roster to do that again. No doubt. Um, well, last last thing I wanted to discuss on this episode and previewing this 22-23 season is, uh, in, in your opinion, Darren, do you think that Conference USA, I feel like we say this every year, but do you think Conference USA could be a multi-bid league this year? Like, do you think they can get two in? I, mean, I know it's hard for a minute. Yeah, it's going to be tough. But a lot of it depends on what other what other teams do in other, in other uh, conferences, but... Mm-hmm. What you what you think? Honestly, man, and I, the last couple of years I've said no, but I think this year I think they can get two in, and I, I think they're going to need help. They're going to need uh, comp, but what they're going to need is the four teams that I mentioned earlier: UAB, of course, North Texas, Western Kentucky, F, and FAU. Too. Hey, you can throw FAU in, uh, but definitely Middle Tennessee. So those five: UAB, North Texas, WKU, FAU, and Middle Tennessee. You're going to need those teams to not only do what they need to do in conference play, and what that means is not losing to FIU on the road or not losing to one of those bottom – not losing to Rice, and we sure as hell know about that, unfortunately. (laughs) Um, But just taking care of business and not losing to one of those terrible bottom dwellers in CUSA. Uh, But not only that, but you've got to handle your business in non-conference too. 
Like right. UAB, hey, you're gonna have to get either what really it would be awesome to get both, but you're gonna have to get either at West Virginia or at home against South Carolina. You're gonna need to beat one of those uh you know uh, high major teams. You're gonna need to do that. You're gonna need to handle your business against Toledo, a really challenging mid major team. You're going to need to handle South Florida from the AAC in the uh, tournament before Thanksgiving and possibly even Georgia, too, as well. Um, so you're going to need to handle your business and you're going to need those other teams like North Texas, Middle, uh, they're in Western Kentucky. They're going to need to win some of their big non-conference games. Like you can't have the other one of those other teams like just slacking off and losing the, all their big non-conference games because with college basketball, man. You look at Ken Palm, you look at net rankings, that's what it all comes down to. And so you've just got to win some of these big games and help out your conference team teams, you know. And I think this might be the year. I, I don't think they'll get more than two in. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I definitely can see two. Like, I can see a UAB or North Texas, uh, a UAB North Texas, or a UAB and a WKU getting in. Um, so, yeah, for the first time in a while, Darren, I do think the way – this season, uh, just looking on paper and what these teams can do, yes, I do think this can be a multi-bid league. And look at UAB in the Ken Palm rankings, opening at 52. I mean, that's probably one of the highest uh, ratings on Ken Palm UAB's had to start a season in, like, <laughs> I mean, 50, 10 years? 50, mm-hmm. I mean, it's been a while. So Right. Um, and then you look at Kim Palm, too, um, which I, I know I talk a lot about Kim Palm. I talked a lot about Kim Palm last year and the year before that. I love Kim Palm dot com. But you look at, you know, UAB 52. North Texas is at 67. So you've got both of those. Um, and then also, hold on, there was in one more. And then FAU, hey, at 89. So and the WKU at 90, 99. So you've got all those in the top 100 mm. before the season starts. So you've got high expectations for this league. So I got to see, you know, I got to think that at least two of them can get in. But you got to handle your business. Hey, if you lose all your big non-conference games and you start losing to Rice and FIU and uh, who's another terrible uh, UTSA, no offense to the Roadrunners listening, but I mean, they're not good in basketball. And um, I mean, I still got to listen to the Alamodo Audible. You know, they dropped an hour and a half preview. Ours isn't, ours isn't going to be that long, but I've got to check that out and see what they got going this year. But I mean, hey, expectations are high, and yeah, I, so a long way to answer this, but I definitely can see uh, Conference USA getting two in this year. Yeah, so I think in order for Conference USA to get two in, it's like one team has to show that they're dominant. Yeah. you know, So one team has to show that, and I think UAB has the, UAB has the, the talent and the overall roster construction to show Hey, that we're just a special team, no matter the conference. One team has to do that, and the other team just has to be dominant enough. Like you're not that team, but you deserve to be in type of deal, you know. So it's kind of like, yeah, no matter what, like UAB has to show something to where it just seemed like no matter what conference we were in, we were going to be in anyway, because we're you know we're that good of a team. We just happen to be in conference USC. USA and whoever the other team is, whether that's North Texas or whether that's WKU or FAU, they just have to show that, you know, it, in in the perfect world, we beat South Carolina and we beat in a perfect world. We're kind of like undefeated going in. And, and they could do that. I, they could do that too, man. I mean, exactly. They do that. And that, that, and I'm just saying that this can, this is how, this is the paper road. Like, this is the clearest road to a two-bid CUSA team if we were to go undefeated because we have the ability to do that. We're not just making it. We can. So if we were to do that and do it pretty convincingly, it makes it so much more easier for this to be a two-bid league. You know? And Um, and you you look at last year, too. Like, if we don't drop that Rice and ODU game, I still thought we had a shot at getting an at-large if we didn't win the tournament. Exactly. We handle you got to handle business because there's more opportunities to screw up in college basketball. Mm-hmm. But if we handle our business and win those big games, I think it's almost automatic. We're going to have a two big league. But now, you know, if we, you know, you start dropping some of those games here and there, it gets tough because. Those, especially uh, Rice or UTSA, that's, those are like really bad losses. 
Can we please just beat Rice? I'm tired of losing to that program. <laughs> I don't like, know what football, it is about. basketball. Wh- how do they have? I mean, their team, their name Rice. Like, come on, man. Like, hey, don't don't nobody want to eat rice? Like, uh, <laughs> right? Hey, put some gravy on it. Hey, or fried rice? Hey, with some soy sauce. Hey, come on. Yeah. Man, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Time to cook their ass up. Eat I know that's rice. right. <laughs> like, come on, man. We we tired of this. You know, let's go oh. ahead and eat the eat the rice, fellas. Like. Destroy like thirty point the rice guys like let's get Please. rice out of our some with our whole program in rice that we just don't mix with. Don't you you us. know what? I played rice one time when I played here at football. We lost. Like oh. I, don't, I don't like these dudes, bro. <laughs> let's just get, they're not a rival or nothing. Like just beat them. No, bro. ain't nobody at their games. In- oh, okay. oh no, I need to be. Qu- I need to be close. <laughs> yeah. <let's laughs> be- hey, the roost might be listening. And hey, Matthew, yeah. well, I respect you guys so much. You know, hey, I- I'm just tired of rice, man. It- it's just oh. no. It ain't no beef or that. It just it ain't like they were like Southern Miss. Like I do not like Southern Miss. It ain't like they um, were Southern Miss or you know one of those other. Kids. Just beat rice. But okay. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we can have a two big league. <laughs> Definitely. Well, guys, hey, we are both super excited about this college basketball season, especially with our UAB Blazers. Um, high expectations. We wouldn't have it any other way, and we know Andy Kennedy and uh, Coach Cross. Uh, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure they, they'd want, you know, high expectations as well. Um, but let's get it done. It all starts tonight, Bartow Arena, Alabama State, 6.30 p.m. Get there. If not, you got you got to stream it on CUSA TV. Uh, good luck finding that and paying for it. But get get down to Bartow if you can. Huge game Friday against Toledo, 4 o'clock. That's going to be streamed on Barstool Sports, I believe. Uh, so, hey, let's get it done. Let's get, get, get off to a good start with this season and just get things rolling, man. Right, students. Rolling. Let students let let you get off to a good start, please. Challenging y'all, I'll, like you know, get up, get up there, and support this team, students. It's on y'all too. Mm-hmm. One hundred percent agree. Well, with that note, guys, uh, we'll be back uh, Wednesday morning, probably to get you ready for another football game as UAB takes on uh, North Texas. So look for that in your feeds, probably early Wednesday morning. Uh, but if you see us at Bartow Arena, make sure to say hey um, to, you know, me or Darian. Um, and we, you know, look forward to kind of meeting some of you guys in person. You know, we kind of talked at the end of last week's, or well, not last week's, Saturday night's episode uh, recapping UTSA where, you know, I was able to talk to a couple guys. Like, we, we, we love interacting with you guys in person. You know, we get the interactions. We get the DMs on Twitter. We get the DMs on Facebook. We get the text messages or the, the Twitter replies. We love that. But, hey. We love it even more if you come say hey in person. Like, don't don't be shy. Hey, Darian and I, hey, we're, we're not going to – yeah, let's talk. Let's chop it up, man. Hey, like, I, we, we love just hanging out with you guys. Um, Hopefully, you've got a Blazer Victory shirt on as well. And if you do not, you can go to storefrontier.com slash blazerpod and get that for basketball season. You saw that Darian, segue? That was smooth right there. I like I'm that. I'm telling you, hey, I'm that was getting on these transitions, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Darren, you want to close us out, buddy? Hey, Blazer Nation, let's ride.